What's up y'all, my name is Eric and you're watching Union Minded and today we're going to dive deeper into the Labor Management Reporting and Disclosure Act of 1959. Now over the last couple videos I told you what the act was about and I told you the different um, legal protections that it, it afforded to union members. Uh, we talked about the Bill of Rights that was created by this act. We, talk about how, we talked about how you enforce that Bill of Rights through civil suit uh, in U.S. court to defend, uh, to defend yourself against abusive, uh, abusive labor organizations. Well, now we're going to talk about Title II. Um, that, that stuff you'll find in Title I. In Title II, you'll find the reporting uh, by labor organizations, officers and employees of labor organizations and employers. This is the reports that are required by law to be filed annually. And I'm only going to touch on the ones that's, that's really, really important uh, for us as union members to know about and to pay attention to. So Section 201 is going to tell you that every labor organization has to file the Constitution and bylaws uh, with the Secretary. And when they say the Secretary, they mean the Secretary of Labor. So anytime you read in this document, Secretary, they're talking about the Secretary of Labor. So every labor organization has to file their Constitution and their bylaws with the Secretary of Labor. Along with that, they have to file a report that's signed by the president and the secretary uh, um, or corresponding principal office officers that contains the following information. The name of the labor organization, uh, the name and the title of each of its officers, the initiation fees uh, required um, from new or transferred members, regular dues or fees other or other periodic payments that are required by the members also. Um, detailed statements or references to the specific provisions of documents filed under this subsection which contain such statements showing the provisions made and procedures followed with respect to each of the following items and it lists a bunch of items I'm going to go through them real quick um, they got them by the letter so letter A is qualifications for or restrictions on membership B levying of assessments C participation in insurance or other benefit plans D authorization of disbursement of funds of the labor organization E, audit of financial transactions of the labor organization. F, the calling of regular and special meetings. G, the selection of officers and stewards and of any representatives to other bodies composed of labor organizations representatives with a specific statement of the manner in which each officer was elected, appointed, or otherwise selected. H, discipline or removal of officers or agents for breaches of their trust. I. Imposition of fines, suspensions, and expulsions of members, including the grounds for such action and any provision made for notice, hearing, judgment on the evidence, and appeal procedures. J. The authorization for bargaining demands. K. Ratification of contract terms. L. The authorization for strikes. And M. The issuance of work permits. Any change in the information that is required by this section shall be reported to the Secretary at the time of at the time the reporting labor organization files. Um, every labor organization shall file annually with the secretary a financial report signed by its president and treasurer or corresponding principal officers containing the following information. And again, this is now the financial report that has to be filed. It has to list the assets and the liabilities at the beginning and the end of the fiscal year. So everything you own and everything you owe has to be listed as by the labor organization receipts of any kind and the sources thereof salary allowances and other direct or indirect disbursements including reimbursed expenses to each officer and also to each employee who during such fiscal year received more than ten thousand dollars in the aggregate from such labor organizations and other any other labor organization affiliated with it or with which it is affiliated or which is affiliated with the same national or international labor organizations. So this report is going to also have your officers' salaries, um, the, what is that called when they give you a, the expenditures and stuff like that that they get uh, to attend different events and stuff like that. All that's going to be list so that you can know how much your local is spending on your representation. It also has to list loans that were made both direct and indirect. Uh, to any businesses or enterprises, uh, any other disper disbursements that are made by it have to be listed. And they're required. Uh, every labor organization is required to submit a report under this title. Shall oh, this is an important one. 
Every labor organization required to submit a report under this title shall make available the information required to be contained in such report to all of its members. And every such labor organization and its officers shall be under a duty enforceable at the suit of any member of such organization in any state court of competent jurisdiction or in the district court of the United States for the district in which such labor organization maintains its principal office to permit such member for just cause to examine any books, records, and accounts necessary to verify such report. The court in such action may, in its discretion, in addition to any judgment awarded to the plaintiff or plaintiffs allow a reasonable attorney's uh, allow a reasonable attorney's fee to be paid by the defendant and costs of the action so these reports have to be issued out annually and they have to be filed with the secretary of labor and they have to be accessible to you as a union member at your request so keep that in mind if you're ever curious about how your local runs or how much money is being spent or where it's going or whatever whatever you can go and ask to see uh, the report the, the report that's required to be filed every year and it'll give you a pretty good breakdown of everything um, every officer blah 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 then it talks about the report of officers and employees of a labor organization now this has to this pertains to the officers that have to file uh, their own financial reports um, that detail any stocks and bonds and stuff of that nature that they uh, receive. Um, that way, you, you know they're not. You can they can show that they're not accepting bribery, uh, bribery money or anything like that to behave a certain way. Uh, employers also have to report if they ever spend money uh, and give money to officers of unions or anything like that or stewards or anything like that. This uh, law, there's a, in section 203, it talks about the report of the employers. So the employers have to also file a report that details why they spent money with the president of this local or the vice president of that local or, or the treasurer of this local and why that money was spent there. And that report has to be filed also with the, uh, with the Secretary of Labor. And we're gonna keep scrolling down because there's a lot and I'm trying to get to some of the really uh, important stuff. Uh, okay, here's uh, section 205, reports made public information. The contents of the reports and documents filed with the secretary pursuant to sections 201, 202, 203, and 211 shall be public information. And the secretary may publish any information and data which he obtains pursuant to the provisions of this title. The secretary may use the information and data for statistical and research purposes and compile and publish such studies, analyses, reports, and surveys based thereon as he may deem appropriate. So what this tells me then is that anything contained in this report, right? That means they got to file the constitution, the bylaws, and the financial and, and this report. That means all of that is public information. All right, so don't let people tell you you can't talk about the contract and you can't talk about the constitution and you can't talk about your labor organization you can't discuss these things that's not true you are protected by federal law to discuss work to discuss your union to discuss collective bargaining to discuss any and all of it so don't be intimidated by anybody who would tell you otherwise i'm reading straight from the law the secretary shall by regulation make reasonable provision for the inspection and ex examination on the request of any person of the information and data contained in any report. So you can even go to the secretary and request to see this stuff, but they have it available online. You can look it up. They're called LM2 reports. We'll get into that on another episode. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that stands out that I think is critical for you guys to know out of Title II. Labor copy, secretary, blah, 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 blah. Uh, retention of records. These reports have to be kept for five years from the date of the filing. So you can go back five years on these reports. Then it says that the secretary has the right to change the rules of the reports. It also has vi uh, violations of so criminal provisions. If anyone who violates these reports is subject to 
ten, up to a ten thousand dollar fine or a year in prison. If they make a false statement, up to a ten thousand dollar fine or a year in prison. False entries or willfully concealing information, again ten thousand in a year. And anyone who signs the report is personal respons personally responsible. Uh, it has in section 210 civil enforcement which says whenever it shall appear that any person has violated or is about to violate any of the provisions of this title the secretary may bring a civil action for such relief including injunctions as may, as may be appropriate and that my friends is title 2 of the labor Management Reporting and Disclosure Act of 1959. Um, again, this is an extensive. It's it's an extensive law. It's not that immense, where it's thousands of pages, but it's it's a lot to cover in just one or two videos. Um, I really do suggest that you go and look it up. Uh, the Labor Management Reporting and Disclosure Act of 1959, probably one of the most important laws of the land right now for working people in unions, and you should probably read it because it pertains to you if you are in a union so my local 26 brothers and sisters look it up and read it up my IBEW brothers and sisters out there across the country look it up and read it get familiar with it um, anybody in a, in a labor union look it up read it get familiar with it and then once you're familiar with it spread the word spread the news to other people around you um, because we are in a labor union we are in a labor movement we are in a labor fight and we're not winning. We're starting to come back. Starbucks is popping off. Amazon is popping off. The teachers are popping off. We're starting to make a comeback. But we ain't winning yet. And the IBW, we have a long ways to go. So each one teach one, man. Get out there and, and, and preach preach the good, good word. And remember, the fight's not left and right. Never has been, never will be. The fight's always been up and down. And it's going to take solidarity to win always all right don't forget to hit the like button subscribe button and hit the notification bell share 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 the video and all that good stuff even though y'all really don't be doing that but do it though all right y'all have a good one peace